Come, you blessed of my Father, says the Lord. Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least of my brethren, you did it for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Maximilian Kolbe, a Catholic priest that died in Auschwitz during the Second World War. And so as we prepare ourselves to celebrate him today, to celebrate the Eucharist, to celebrate our renewed life in Christ, we first recognize our own sinfulness, the times that we have chosen to not follow Jesus, the times that we have ignored the call of grace and conscience, and we turn to God and ask for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who filled the priest and martyr, St. Maximilian Kolbe, with a burning love for the Immaculate Virgin Mary, and with zeal for souls and love of neighbor, graciously grant through his intercession that striving for your glory by eagerly serving others, we may be conformed even until death to your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abominations. Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem. By origin and birth you are of the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. As for your birth, the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut. You were neither washed with water nor anointed, nor were you rubbed with salt nor swathed in swaddling clothes. No one looked on you with pity or compassion to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out on the ground as something loathsome the day you were born. Then I passed by and saw you weltering in your blood. I said to you, live in your blood and grow like a plant in the field. You grew and developed. You came to the age of puberty. Your breasts were formed. Your hair had grown. But you were still stark naked. Again I passed by you and saw that you were now old enough for love. So I spread the corner of my cloak over you to cover your nakedness. I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you. You became mine, says the Lord God. Then I bathed you with water washed away your blood, and anointed you with oil. I clothed you with an embroidered gown, put sandals of fine leather on your feet. I gave you a fine linen sash and silk robes to wear. I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your arms, a necklace about your neck, a ring in your nose, pendants in your ears, and a glorious diadem upon your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver, Your garments were of fine linen, silk, and embroidered cloth. Fine flour, honey, and oil were your food. You were exceedingly beautiful, with the dignity of a queen. You were renowned among the nations for your beauty, perfect as it was, because of my splendor which I had bestowed on you, says the Lord God. But you were captivated by your own beauty. You used your renown to make yourself a harlot and you lavished your harlotry on every passerby, whose own you became. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you when you were a girl, and I will set up an everlasting covenant with you, 
that you may remember and be covered with confusion, and that you may be utterly silenced for shame when I pardon you for all you have done, says the Lord God. The word of the Lord. You have turned from your anger. You have turned from your anger. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You have turned from your anger. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You have turned from your anger. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You have turned from your anger. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Receive the word of God, not as the word of men, but as it truly is the word of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh? So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only those to whom that is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. Trying to connect the Feast of a Martyr with all this on marriage and adultery, um, it's not much of a stretch, but the key to all of this today is the idea of preparation, of how have we been living our lives of what, what was always the way of things, and, and how can we change that if we're not on the right path. St. Maximilian Kolbe is a, was a Franciscan priest, and great devotion to Mary, great zeal in preaching and in doing a lot of things, founding a magazine, a newspaper, all these wonderful things. Uh, a great threat uh, to the German government at the time, and in prison. And while at Auschwitz there was a, uh, an escape attempt that, of course, the guards were very angry. So picking about ten men and saying they were going to be starved to death, they were kind of ushered off. One man crying out, I have a large family, my wife, my children, what am I to do? And with that, Father Maximilian himself stepping forward and saying, I will take his place. Eventually, the other nine do die of starvation, but the one Maximilian still lives until finally they had to kill him with lethal injection. But that willingness to die for another, 
I don't think it's always overnight. Some of us are blessed with an immediate grace. Some of us are blessed with immediate miracles. But as we've been talking at different times the past couple weeks, sometimes the miracle is not immediate. Sometimes it is the small things that we pay attention to. And if we look at this preparation throughout St. Maximilian's life, we see that his times of prayer, his times of devotion, and a lifetime of being of service to others and giving of himself to others prepared him then for the great martyrdom. When we look at these ideas of marriage, it's kind of how have things always been that we try our best to teach our children about the permanency of marriage, but also what are we looking for in someone to marry? Now in marriage prep, of course, it's wonderful to see the couple so in love and getting ready. We try our hardest to also prepare them for realities and realities of maybe not always agreeing but especially the reality of don't get caught up so much in the idea of love that you miss the reality of love. Don't get so caught up in planning the wedding that you really don't pay attention to what the marriage is. One of the top overwhelming reasons in the United States for annulments is based on lack of due discretion. Either they didn't have a clear understanding of what marriage is, they didn't have good role models for marriage, or they saw red flags and simply ignored them. And in hindsight, they can normally point to them. We don't beat these people up. We don't beat up people for marriages that have fallen apart. But we do pray for a lifetime of preparation for the right one. We do pray that how can our, our, our young people find someone that they are meant to be with someone that they can work on their holiness with, someone that they can bring holiness to. And it does take a lifetime of preparation and a lifetime of ongoing giving of ourselves to another. So all of our preparation in service, all of our preparation in prayer is about giving of ourselves to God, giving of ourselves to each other. So in the end, when we come to the wedding feast of the Lamb, the wedding feast of Jesus, to the whole church. We are ready to give ourselves to him because throughout our lives he has given himself to us. And joined together in God's holy presence, we pray for the needs of this assembly, the church, and the world. For all members of our holy church, may God look graciously upon our efforts and needs in serving his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For civic leaders, may the Holy Spirit lead them in the ways of charity and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. For married couples who face difficulties, may God's grace give them strength in their work toward reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. For this faith community, as we celebrate this feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe, may God imbue in us a sacrificial love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they find eternal joy and comfort in the presence of God our Father. Let us pray to the Lord. And for the soul of Jim McKinnon, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we ask that you look favorably on the prayers of this assembly and grant them according to your will. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. (laughs) 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We present our oblations to you, O Lord, humbly praying that we may learn from the example of St. Maximilian to offer our very lives to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Maximilian and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those unable physically to come and receive the Eucharist, you can still receive the fullness of the graces of the Blessed Sacrament by making a spiritual communion. To make your spiritual communion, please repeat after me. 
This prayer written by St. Alphonsus Liguori. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Greater love has no one than to lay down his life for his friends, says the Lord. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that renewed by the body and blood of your Son, we may be inflamed with the same fire of charity that St. Maximilian received from this holy banquet, through Christ our Lord. Uh, assumption tomorrow, there's no obligation for the holy days that are on a Saturday, but I'll still be having Mass in here at 9 tomorrow morning for any who would like to come. Uh, also, too, um, we always need a reader uh, at Mass so that I'm not... So they don't, it's just not always me. It's not about me. It's about us. Uh, so someone can always be prepared to read, uh, especially when Chris isn't here. He's happy to always do it. Uh, but you can all take turns too. Don't worry about if you're a good reader or a bad one. And don't worry about people on the camera watching you. Uh, we just will take turns with it together. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ.